So let's do that question part C. We are told that a European core option, that means the core option, eh? yeah, trading at the security exchange has an exercise price of, of 40, that's the exercise price. It will mature, uh, its maturity date is six months from now. That means our T, six months. So it's six over 12, that's 0 0.5. Its current stock price is 28. So that's the market price. And its inter, uh, instantaneous variance of the return in the underlying asset is 0 0.5. The risk free rate is 6%. 6%. Mm -hmm. Required. Using the Brack and Scores option pricing model to compute the value of the core option. So you are given the hint, eh? that's the formula. So let's do an analysis. We do an analysis. In this case, we are told that the market price is 28. And it has an exercise price. Exercise price is 40. Then the risk free rate, we are told it's 6%. That means 0 0.06. T, time to maturity is six months. So that means if it's six months, it will be 0 0.5. That's six over 12. And we are told that the instantaneous variance of the lying asset is 0 0.5. So how do we get the value of the call using Black and score? So value of the call, it's PND1 minus the exercise price. You divide by E. R, T, and D2, where D1 is the natural log market price over the exercise price. Then you add the risk free rate plus a half, standard deviation square, you get the variance. Then you multiply by T. All of it, you divide by the standard deviation square root of T. So now let's get that. So you take the natural log using a calculator. P, our market price is 28. You divide by the exercise price. The exercise price we have is 40. Then you add R, the risk free rate. The risk free rate was 6%. So you'll take 0 0.06. You add 0 0.5. That means a half. 0 0.5. You multiply by the variance. Standard deviation square. That's the variance which was also 0 0.5. Then you multiply by time remaining to maturity. And time remaining to maturity, time remaining to maturity, it was five, eh? Yeah, six months, so it's just 0 0.5. All of it you divide by standard deviation. In this case, we have the variance, it's 0 0.5. To get the standard deviation, you get the square root. Then you multiply by square root of time. Time still, it's six months, that's five, uh, 0 0.5, eh? so 0 0.5. So how do we get that? So kind of try to compute that, try to compute that, try to compute that. Then we can compare notes. Good, now let's continue, let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> Yeah, from, <laughs> uh -huh, we have negative 0 0.57. I can also see negative 0 0.403. Uh -huh. Another one. Yeah, I can see negative 0 0.41. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, negative, yeah, correct. Actually, the correct answer is negative 0 0.4. Zero. Remember, we said that it should always be into two decimal places because of reading the, uh, the normal curve. Eh? So the correct answer is negative 0 0.4. Then let's go to D2. We said, how do we get D2? It's D1 minus this. So you get D1, which is negative 0 0.40. You deduct standard deviation. In short, you usually deduct this denominator, denominator of the D1 here. So that means you'll take square root of 0 0.5 times square root of 0 0.5 at your fanya. Do that and give me the answer. Yeah, I can see Mother Sami, yeah. It's 0. Point, uh, it's 0 0.9, correct. It's negative 0 0.90. Can see you know how to use a calculator. Now, let's go back to how to get D1, ND1, and ND2. So in this case, it's 0 0.5 plus or minus 
just post that post that 0 0.5 0 0.5 do we add or do we minus yeah correct i can see minus yeah if d1 and d2 they are negatives that means you minus when it's negative this is what it means if it's negative that means it's on the lower side this side so that means you take all of it which is 0 0.5 you deduct this so that means so for example our day one we had 0 0.4 you just come to the normal table you just come to the normal table 0 0.41 0 0.41 one. Here, here. 0 0.41 so it will be 0 0.41 0.1591 d2 our d2 was 0 0.9 0 0.9 since it's negative so just come 0 0.90 so something is wrong here remember uh let me go back to d1 d1 was 0 0.4 it was just 0 0.4 eh? so if it's 0 point uh, 0 uh, negative 0 0.4 you just come here you just take 0 0.40 so it's 1554 one five five four uh d2 was 0 0.9 0 0.9 so just 0 0.90 which is uh 0 0.3159 and with that this one you get it's 0 0.3446 this one you get 0 0.1841 now with that you can uh, now get the value of the call now the value of the call you go back to the formula it's p the market price per share was 28 you multiply by nd1 and we have gotten the nd1 0 0.3446 then we minus the exercise price the exercise price was 40 you divide by e the exponential which is e raised to power rt r our risk free rate was 6 it is 0 0.06 then you multiply by t time to maturity also was 0 0.5 then you multiply by nd2 so in this case uh, i uh, yeah nd2 and how much was our nd2 so our nd2 we got it was 0 0.1841 good so with that kind of compute that and compute that. And then, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. For those who want to use this E, some people write it at 2.7183. For those who want to use, uh, use it directly, for example, this is what I mean. Eh? Let's look at my calculator. It's Shift E. If you want to use it the way it is, you don't write, you don't write raised to power. If you write raised to power, it will give you a syntax error so kindly if you want to use e just use the way it is eh? e don't write less power just open the bracket ne uh, then you take 0 0.06 you multiply by 0.5 you close the bracket yeah so now you can continue just compute this yeah correct yeah the correct answer is 2.1 or 2. Point, are you getting 2.5 Uh, two point yeah sure it's two point five two point five